and welcome to my studio. Today I wanted to show you how to make this summertime shell class. And this is really simple. It gives you a great feel for summer. You can use maybe some of the shells that you've collected on your special trips to the beach. And if you need some slice shells, we also have those available at MiriamJoy.com. So let's get started. The great thing about this project is your gourd doesn't have to be perfect. You can actually use a cracked gourd or a gourd that didn't work for another project and it covers up a lot of imperfection. You just want to make sure that your gourd's clean, that you've washed all of the mold off. I have just a tiny bit of the white. Um, you could even sand that off, but you don't have to worry about sanding it. If you do have a crack in your gourd, poke a hole at the very end of the crack to keep it from running anymore and just do this right over the top. You could even do it over the top of something you had originally had for another project. You could just fill in the holes and just keep on going. That's what's really nice about this. The only thing you'd want to make sure, like with the color, that this is sealed so that's not going to bleed through. I do spray paint the inside of mine with just black spray paint. I pick up the cheap 98 cent one from Walmart and just spray it directly in. If you happen to get some on the outside, just take your Mr. Clean Magic Eraser and scrub it off and it works really good. We're going to be using Ultra Matte Gel and we want to make sure that it is on the thicker side and that it is on the opaque side, that it does not dry clear. This is matte. Um, I don't know on this project. I don't think it would make a difference if it was gloss or matte, either one, because we, it, we're going to spray it that way in the end. So don't worry about that. But what we're going to do is simply take our gel and I'm going to use my finger because this is what gives it that real kind of ocean looking feel to it. We want it on kind of thick but not too thick and I just what I kind of done is I've just kind of spread it around with my finger and then just come back in and tap it and give it that wave kind of feel and just do that all over. You probably don't want to do the bottom of it until the other part is dry. So think about doing this gourd in steps. So that's something you can pick up, work on for a little bit and set back down until it dries. And I just usually leave mine overnight. It depends on how thick it is, on how fast it dries. Now another thing I want to tell you is when you're pouncing it with your finger, you don't want all of it to go the same direction. I'll show you what I mean. You don't want a significant pattern. If you have that all just like that, you have a pattern. You kind of want to turn it around here and there on it. And another reason that we're using the opaque, especially if we're going to use a blue color, is it covers up our yellow base so that we can apply the blue and it will work. So go ahead and finish up your whole board. You're going to do the top and then when it's dry you can do the bottom and let that dry and then we'll apply our color. The, uh, the Ultra Matte Gel, and like I said, it could be Ultra Gloss, it just needs to be the Ultra Gel, you find at the craft stores. And get your 40% coupon and buy it that way, and that way it is a lot more reasonable. And a little bit will go a long way. And as you can see, I don't have it super thick. I've decided to even go ahead and put a little bit in the middle, and I have it all done except for 
the very bottom and you wouldn't have to do that you could paint that part but you'd want to make sure that the very bottom none of that area shows and if you were doing like this part and didn't have a rim to tie anything on you could use little shells like that all the way around and that would be really really cute we have a bunch of different selections i want to kind of show you these are our cut shells and those are cute we have our little tiny urchin shells which are darling and they have some kind of neat color to them too we have kind of a flower looking shell so there's a bunch of things that you can do with them we also have some little um, embellishments like the turtle which would be darling on them so think outside the box when we start to add those to them and kind of give you some different ideas but check our website and see what we have available and so now we're going to let that completely dry I have let this really dry and it takes a few hours and like I said I do it overnight because it can depend on how warm it is your humidity how rainy it is outside all kinds of factors and a lot of times when you think it's dry there's some thicker places that still aren't dry so you want to just make sure that it's really well dry so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a felt applicator and a piece of felt and we're going to apply our alcohol inks on with that and you can use whatever colors you want to I'm going to be using like three different shades of blue and you use what you have or you may want to do it like oranges and yellows or different colors like that so just whatever is what you envision or what you have access to so don't think that you have to do it the colors that I have here and I've got denim and pool and stream is what I am using but again like I said don't imagine that is what you have to use I'm going to see if I like that denim that denim's a little dark so and then I'm also going to be using my um, blending solution this is also from Adirondack this is the blend, uh, blending solution and I'm just going to pour it on here and this is going to help this go further and kind of um, make it apply easier it's going to water it down but it's going to make it apply easier I'm always starting at the bottom because I want to see if I like that color and right now I've got it really really spotty and I do not like the denim so I am going to put it on pause for a minute and grab another color okay my husband has convinced me to go ahead and give this a try he really likes the color he says it almost matches the shirt I got on kind of a peacock color so we don't want to leave any of the white we want to come in here and move it around you don't want to leave your tool the exact same place every time so you don't end up with a uniform pattern we want to make sure that it's all kind of different as we're going so i think it'd be really pretty to do an orange and yellow one to make it a sunset color that's how I would kind of see it, maybe with a little bit of purple in it as well. But you can see, because of the blending solution, we're still going on our first application of the inks. And that's kind of unusual, especially with the alcohol inks, because they can really dry out on you going back and getting all the white you may like to leave the white showing through more that may be something that you like to do and the felt because we've got all these raised edges really kind of helps us get it down into that more down into the ridges from the, uh, the gel the Okay, I think I'm going to reload here and we're going to just stick with our same felt piece. We're not going to get a new one. 
because it's already kind of blended one into another. So you want to apply it back on the areas that you started with previously. And remember that was still white when we very first started a little bit here. And I'm not using a whole lot. You'd be surprised how little. And I'm not going to use quite as much of that. And we're going to give it a round of our alcohol solution again. And we are off and running again. how to make bubbles, little ocean bubbles on that. That would be fun as well, wouldn't it? So I'm going to go ahead and just finish this all the way up. Make sure I have all my white covered up. And then we'll take it from there coloring it and I really do like it. It's got a different look to it and I'm going to use my dark blue to do the inside neck. Remember we had talked about whether to use the black spray paint or not and I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to again use my blender and I'm going to put it into my brush like water and then just put that in the neck here. Well, we want a darker color because your, your inside of the gourd should be a disappearing area. That's why we use the black. If you've ever wondered why we use a black, it should be a shadow. It shouldn't be something that draws attention to the gourd in any way. So we went ahead and got that done. Just do that on the very edges. I'm going to go clean my brush out. You can either use your 90% alcohol or your blender to clean your brush out. Now that we've got the inside done, we're going to heat set our um, alcohol inks. And this is real important because you don't want them to bleed when you're varnishing them. So I'm using a heat gun or an embossing tool. So I'm going to heat these up. helps that set. And I'm going to be using Inca Gold today. This is by Viva. I found mine at Joann's Fabrics. It's actually a wax based product which is right up my aisle. And I keep a baby wipe in it and I, if it dries out, I wet it again with alcohol. Um, they tell you that these last forever. I had a little bit more harder time, I guess because of where we live is so dry. But we're simply going to take these and keep them covered as much as possible if it's uh, the hot summer. And I am going to put mine on with my finger and I'm just going to simply get a little bit on and start to rub this and this is how we're going to get that real cool kind of oceany feel to it kind of just reminds me of ocean so you don't want a lot you just want to bring the highlights out of that you could use any waxed rub on um, product if you didn't find the ink of coal You also can look for it on eBay. It is a Germany based product, I believe is what they tell us. But try not to have it so thick that you get it on the actual gourd down below. You just want to stay up on the ridges. 
and you see it doesn't take a lot and I'm just going to go ahead finish this all up and then we'll talk about varnishing it the color of the Inca gold was silver I forgot to mention it that and just make sure that you got all of that just take a double look at it. I also did up on the edges and I didn't smooth my edges. Those were just kind of broken edges that I just left. But it's easier to go back and put more on later than it is to take anything off. That's kind of a little bit impossible there. So think about that as well. So we're gonna put that aside. And at this point in time, we want to go out and varnish it. And if you have a Miriam Joy, Joy dry board, you can set it on. It helps keep it even a drawing on the bottom as well as a top. And you can keep working. Um, you also can use a workable fixative over the alcohol inks if you're worried about them running a little bit. Because of the way this gourd is, a little run probably isn't going to show up or hurt anything. To keep from running, you want to do a couple coats of light varnish, meaning not wet. You shouldn't see dampness at all when you're doing that. And then go to some heavier coats. I'm going to use gloss because I want it very shiny. I think that goes with what we're working on. I want a non-yellow. You could use Rust-Oleum. You could use Crayol or Krylon. Any of those kind of brands is just fine for this uh, project. Any of that works. Don't use a brush on because we do have the alcohol inks and they will bleed on you. So that's real important to remember. So let's go outside and get this varnished and then we'll get it all decorated. Decide where you want your gourd to be the front, what looks the nicest. This lid kind of goes that way. So I'm going to glue my twine on, and I'm using smaller twine. If you don't have some twine, take apart a piece of rope or some hemp or something like that. I'm going to hot glue this on, and I'm going to start, because this has got a wider bottom than my other neck did, I'm going to start at the top and work my way down. And I wanted to leave some space and I just want to wrap that nice and tight downward. I want it up against itself. And by doing it from narrow to thick, we also can take that down a little bit further, but we don't want it too much. I think that's probably good there. So I'm going to stop and I'm just going to hot glue that on. Just make sure your hot glue is small enough that you put that right underneath there and that just covers all of that up. I went outside and I picked up a twig. You could find a piece of driftwood at the ocean, anything like that, and I'm going to use it to hang my shells on. I've kind of been playing with shells here, deciding which ones I like. So I took some of my twine and I just tied it on to my shells, and you can glue it on a little bit of hot glue if you want to there, and I just wrapped it around my little piece of wood here and I wanted them in varying heights and then I am just going to simply glue this guy on now and there's probably one way he fits better than others and I want to cover all these tails and tuck them in so I like the wood with it. I think it just kind of gives it that more oceany feel, kind of the driftwood feel. And I really just like it. So we're going to let that dry a little bit. I am going to use this guy in my front. I had a bigger one on the other one, and I have decided that I think I'm just going to use a smaller one this time. And we're going to use E6000 to glue him on because there's nothing absorbent that to, we can glue him on like this guy because we've got the twine and the wood and that's all absorbent. So check where those hang. Kind of look where you want this right in the middle where it's going to show. Not at the bottom, not anything like that. 
and I'm going to put E6000 on and then I'm going to tape him on so he doesn't slide because he's heavier and he most likely will slide. So I'm just using painter's tape. I'm going to use that again to help kind of hold it right in place. This is E6000. It's a hard glue to glue like glass to glass, rock to rock, things like that. It's a real good glue. We do have it at MiriamJoy.com if you need some. We usually have it for buy one, get one free. And I put it just on the outside of my shell where it's going to be touching because the inside will not be touching at all. Another thing you might want to kind of do is set your gourd up because as we know, gourds do not sit straight. So we may want to make sure that it is sitting straight. I've kind of got it there. And it doesn't look like it's going to move much to me, but I think I won't need the tape on this guy because of the way I'm just going to let him sit and finish up. And we're going to let him dry. I honestly would just leave him overnight. They always tell you to let it cure for 24 hours, but we want to get him nice and tight. Make sure on the first 30 minutes that he doesn't move around on you. My little shell finished up drying. I did go ahead and put a little raffia bow on top and if you didn't have the um, twine you could also use raffia instead and that would be real summery as well. So for more of the shells and embellishments come on over to MiriamJoy.com. Make sure you give us a thumbs up and please share our videos so we can continue to grow. You can also subscribe to our videos so you can make sure that you're the first to see them when they're out. Thank you for joining me today. God bless.